A cordial greeting. Today is Friday, August 9, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 8 p.m. local time in the Eastern Caribbean, where we continue to closely monitor a strong tropical wave that is forecasted to develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm and reach the Caribbean region between next Tuesday and Wednesday. The chances of development have continued to increase throughout the day. It is important for residents of the Northern Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and the Dominican Republic to pay close attention to the evolution of this tropical wave. In this video, I will provide an update on the latest model runs, which consistently continue to project that it will pass over or very near the Northeast Caribbean. However, when these disturbances are in the process of developing, there is no more accurate forecast we can give until a defined center is established. What I can tell you is that the projections continue to suggest it will pass over or very near the Northeast Caribbean. One scenario suggests it could take a slightly more northwesterly track, passing just northeast of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, while another scenario has it entering the Caribbean Sea and directly affecting the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. In this video, I will show some wind gust projections that could be felt across the region. But more importantly, regardless of the path this future cyclone takes, I will show some of the expected rainfall accumulations across the region. We are concerned about the high risk of flooding early to mid next week. There is still a lot of uncertainty in the long term about whether what may potentially become. Tropical Storm Ernesto will take a path toward the eastern United States or maintain a more westerly track, which could pose a threat to the United States and the Bahamas. Let's take a closer look at the infrared satellite image, where we can see that the tropical wave remains disorganized. However, the area of thunderstorm coverage continues to increase today, which is a sign of some development, but for now, it remains quite slow. Nonetheless, as of 8 p.m., the National Hurricane Center has increased the development chances to 70% over the next 7 days and raised the chances to 10% over the next 48 hours. Overall, the forecast remains the same projecting that this tropical wave will continue on a west-northwest trajectory and could become a tropical depression just before reaching the Lesser Antilles, passing very close or over the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic as a tropical storm. However, the intensity forecast carries a lot of uncertainty, as is typical with systems still in development. We can analyze the different trajectory scenarios very well in the ensemble of GFS model members, where we basically have two scenarios. The first is a weaker system, as a tropical depression or tropical storm, that could enter the Caribbean Sea and affect the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. If the wave strengthens faster than anticipated, it could take a track just northeast of the Caribbean. So, this is really the area of possible trajectory, and the reason why everyone in the Northeast Caribbean should remain vigilant over the weekend. Also, in the long term, some members show a north-northwest trajectory, staying away from the U.S. coast, while others have a more westerly trajectory that could pose a greater threat to the eastern United States, the Bahamas, and even Cuba. So there is a lot to watch over the coming days. Similarly, the ensemble members of the European model agree with this projection. While most members show a track over the Northeast Caribbean, some of them present another scenario where it would pass just northeast of the Caribbean, which would be the best-case scenario. However, we also have others that maintain a more southerly and westerly trajectory, which would be the worst-case scenario because the strongest effects could be felt in the Northeast Caribbean. Like the GFS model members, you can see the significant spread in the long term regarding where this future cyclone could move, so there is much to monitor over the coming days. And although it is still difficult to talk about the direct or indirect effects we expect in the region, we wanted to show you the latest runs of the global models. Let's start with the GFS model where in its latest runs, this future tropical cyclone enters the Caribbean Sea and affects the northern Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico with tropical storm force winds between Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Also, notice that in the latest run, the GFS model projects the circulation center passing just south of Puerto Rico, leaving the strongest winds over the island, and has a Category 1 hurricane making landfall in the Dominican Republic. Although for now, we project it passing through the region as a tropical storm, we definitely cannot rule out that it may strengthen into a hurricane. However, this uncertainty will continue for at least the next two days. In terms of precipitation, the GFS model is projecting a lot of rain in some areas, ranging from 4 to 12 inches, including the arc of the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. However, the maximum rainfall amounts will depend on exactly where that circulation center passes, but I show you this image to indicate that there is also a high risk of flooding early to mid next week. In millimeters, we are talking about 80 to 300 millimeters that could fall in some parts of the eastern and northeastern Caribbean. On the other hand, we also have the European model projection, which in the latest run has a trajectory over the northern Lesser Antilles and over Puerto Rico. In this case as a moderate tropical storm, 
crossing the region between Tuesday and Wednesday while keeping the circulation center just northeast of the Dominican Republic. In terms of rainfall, similar to the GFS model, it is projecting between 4 and 10 inches of rain, especially in the northern Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Eastern Dominican Republic. In millimeters, we are talking about 100 to 250 millimeters of accumulated rainfall from Tuesday to Thursday. To show you the consensus we have between the projections of the global models, here we have the German model projection, which has a strong tropical storm crossing over the northern Lesser Antilles and over the Virgin Islands, staying just northeast of Puerto Rico. Additionally, the UK model projection also has a trajectory over the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic, also as a tropical storm. So overall, not much has changed compared to the forecast I recorded earlier today. The chances of development will continue to increase over the coming days. There is a high probability of a tropical depression forming just east of the Lesser Antilles. And for now, it is projected to pass near or over the northern Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic. However, it is currently impossible to know if it will pass just northeast of the Caribbean, or if it will maintain a more westerly and southerly trajectory, entering the Caribbean Sea and causing more significant effects. So there is much to watch in the coming days. It is important that if you live in the East and Northeast Caribbean, you stay attentive to the evolution of this system and review your emergency plans. Here at Hurricane Info, I will continue to keep you informed of any changes in the projections. In the meantime, it is important to check if you are subscribed to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video, click the red button that says subscribe, then click the bell so you get notifications when I upload new videos. Tomorrow morning, I will update this forecast. Until then, I wish you all an excellent night.